everybody, it's Star Raptor here, and I want to talk about the 40th anniversary of Star Wars. Today marks that the franchise has been around for 40 years. I've been around for 26 of those years, and I don't know what life would be like without Star Wars. It's that simple. I might be a little fanatic when it comes to this movie franchise, but when it all boils down to it, it's a lot more than a movie. It's a lifestyle. It's it's a connection I've made with other people. It's just something so great. So I just wanted to take a time today to kind of just do a off the cuff kind of, you know, just a, a conversation with why Star Wars is important to me. So to trace back the importance would be going all the way back to my first memory of Star Wars. And those of you that have watched my q and I've answered a couple of these questions but for those of you who haven't learned well I first started by watching Return of the Jedi this is the OG version you know the non non special edition um, I was over at my neighbor's house and I just happened to be over there and there watching Return of the Jedi particularly I remember the job of the Hutt scene and the job of the Hutt scene really resonated me, with me because first off I was scared out of my mind by the character I thought he was pretty much real because well the practical effects in Star Wars are just groundbreaking so I was like from that point on I was like okay I want to learn more about this this universe and then the special editions came out in 1997 I remember going to every single one of those and just being obsessed with the toys and, and, and going out and, and getting these like uh, Happy Meal toys and whatnot and you know it just kind of spawned off from there. Uh, things that I really liked about Star Wars were mainly the aliens first off. I really enjoyed the Maz Eisley scene. I think that was excellent. I really really loved just kind of get an idea for how big the scope of the universe is. How big the galaxy was with you know all these characters that I would kind of think in the back of my head about you know oh what his backstory might be and where he might be and not only that was in the first Star Wars the space battles were something that were just absolutely extraordinary I just couldn't get over how George Lucas conceived of this how some singular person was able to come up with this amount of lore, this amount of backstory that seemed like it could have really been in the past in another galaxy. And I just want to give credit to George Lucas because the guy is, you know, he's he's a genius. And just, the, it's a miracle how he got Star Wars started. I've read a couple biographies in my time and it is just unbelievable how he was able to get this thing off the ground and how people didn't really think it was going to work and he didn't really at the time know it was going to be this big and you know Star Wars is obviously like the most celebrated franchise of all time I mean most of the TV shows I watch they have to at least throw in one reference an episode almost at this point it's getting to that point where everybody knows about Darth Vader everybody knows about lightsabers everybody knows about the Millennium Falcon and X-Wings it's just so something that is just so prevalent in our pop culture it's almost impossible to meet somebody that hasn't watched Star Wars and when I encounter those people that haven't watched Star Wars I don't want to scold them for not watching it. I say you know let's let's sit down and watch this thing together because it changed my life and I would love to see what your you know perspective is on that so my favorite character in all of Star Wars is Luke Skywalker he was my first character that I really connected with I mean I guess in a kind of way I sort of looked like him people might say so that kind of was something that was in the back of my head like oh this guy sort of looks like me in a way I kind of want to you know attach myself to what this guy's going through and just the fact that he sort of started out you know these very humble roots he's just any other person like you or me that was just you know living the, doing the same thing every day every day and then he gets this opportunity to explore the wider galaxy and that just is something that was just so profound like he gets embroiled in this entire conflict between good and evil and that message of good and evil was something that really resonated with me and it, it just like Star Wars itself has taught me so many lessons about you know family and friends and, and you know just keep going for determination there's so many good themes that just you know move beyond that this is just a movie and you know spawning off of that so I do remember seeing the Phantom Menace and the Phantom Menace I was about uh, 9 or 10 when that came out and I remember the hype was unreal and 
just the build up to that with with all the promotion all the toys like the toys holy crap guys that is one of the biggest things I can take out of being a Star Wars fan was just the action figures I remember mailing away for the um, Mace Windu figure I think the stap with the battle droid was also another mail-in with the Star Wars inside are really those are going back in the day man like I was literally making up scenes like I I've, I've never been one with film I've never been that much of like a storyteller I never really wrote much but what I did do with these action figures was I would make these elaborate kind of storylines where I would just act out scenes with the action figures. I mean, I'm sure most of you guys did the same thing. You know, it was just something so fun, and I just remember spending hours with that. I have about three tubs worth of the Hasbro Power of the Force figures, which were what I was going around collecting. And it just added something else entirely to my my fandom of Star Wars and moving off from that my my history with the Star Wars video games I want to talk a little bit about and with the Star Wars video games I remember playing Super Star Wars and wow was that game really hard this is back in the heyday of the Super Nintendo and you know there there were cheat codes and stuff but honestly like if you didn't beat the game in like one sitting you would have to pretty much like play the game over again from the first level and I remember it just being so hard that first level with the Sarlacc pit popping out it was just something else and uh, then I played Super Empire Strikes Back I I think I, I got to like Cloud City in that in that game and then Return of the Jedi I don't think I ever beat that one I was I was right there at the end with uh, with Palpatine and Vader but damn they were fun but they're really really hard and then moving off from that I remember uh, during the time of Nintendo 64, I remember I'd saved up like all my money from like Easter and Christmas, my birthday, for for a long time to buy an N64 because Star Wars: Shadow of the Empire was just released, and that was the catalyst for me to buy the N64. I was like, I need that game because back in these days, you know, there was no online, so I would go over to a friend's house, or people would bring over their N64 and play it, and they would have Shadows in the Empire, and I would see Boba Fett and, and Slave 1, and you'd have to battle against them, I was like, there is no way I'm not buying this damn game, so I literally went out there, and I bought this game, and I've spent hours and hours and hours playing this game, this is back in the day, where I would just, like, literally play through a game probably, like, ten times, like, I didn't really have a job being I was 10 years old or whatever so I didn't have many games to play with so I would just continuously play and play the game again another great memory I had of the N64 was the Rogue Squadron game and that was something that just like solidified my obsession with Star Wars X-Wings and the vehicles in Star Wars and I just absolutely love that fast forward a couple years forward and yeah, we got the GameCube, which also had Rogue Squadron. Uh, I played that game like every summer for a long, long, long time, man. It was it was one of those games where I think I, I might actually have the record for myself of beating that game the most out of any games I've actually completed. It was just an obsession. And then I remember this is this is a, a fond memory of Xbox, the original Xbox. There was a game coming out called Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic and holy crap that holds a special part of my heart guys because I remember I would go to the supermarket with my mother and she you know she would get her all her stuff and I would say oh I'm gonna go to the magazine aisle and I would literally pick up like the gaming magazines and Star Wars Insider and I would stand there for what seemed like hours just reading flipping through these pages I actually like to go to the supermarket because I wanted to read about Star Wars and games and I kept seeing these articles about this new upcoming RPG, which I didn't even really know what that was at the time, of Star Wars Knights of the Republic. And it was supposed to be set 4,000 years before the original trilogy. I was so down with playing this game, guys. Like I was like, yes, let's play it. And I don't have the money to afford this new system. Um, so yeah, I would go over to my friend's house and I would just constantly, constantly like play or watch him play it. And that, again, was another game that caused me to buy a new system. Do you see the trend here, guys? Literally, I'm just buying new systems because of Star Wars games. And Knights of the Republic was just an experience that I just, I just couldn't get away from. Like, I literally, 
I talked about myself playing uh, Rogue Squadron, Rogue Leader so many times, and well, Knights of the Republic is probably very close to that. I would play through Dark Side, Light Side. It was something that was so crazy because as much as I love Star Wars, the original trilogy, this was the first time a video game was so cinematic that it actually allowed me to experience something else out of the original trilogy and hold almost the same amount of weight, weight with the stories of... Basila Sean and Revan and 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 Candor's Order with the Mandalorians. It was just so rich in history and backstory, and it was just I'm just, I just loved it so much. Fast forward, I also bought an Xbox One just so I could pay, play Battlefront. It took me like two years to get an Xbox One. They announced Battlefront. I was like, that is the game I'm going to buy this system for, and I still play Battlefront. I still love it. So that's just a little bit of a history with. Um, the uh, video games I've been playing for Star Wars. Moving on to novels. So I had previously started reading novels before Heir to the Empire or before I knew about Heir to the Empire because I, I read all the Harry Potter books and then I found out about these Star Wars books and you know there's tons of them out by at the point because I was you know 12 or 13 or something like that and um, Heir to the Empire was the first Star Wars book I read and it was history ever since then I got obsessed with the characters of Mara Jade and Grand Admiral Throne, and again, like the video games, like the Lights of the Republic, it was super cool to realize that besides the movies, there was content out there for people to actually read and and and, and continue the stories of our favorite characters while meeting new ones as well. And that started my obsession with reading a, a bunch of Legends material from that point on. And then talking about comic books, comic books, comic books, comic books, like they are one of the the newer kind of obsessions I have in life and it all started out not too long ago 2015 they released Star Wars number one I picked that up and it's been history ever since and now I've been obsessed with Marvel combat uh, comics like Daredevil and I've been obsessed with uh, D the DC Rebirth comics I love all them and it was thanks to Star Wars again for introducing me to another medium of of content that I would never wise and not never understand really basically um, and moving on to TV, so with Star Wars on TV, I remember, I, I went downstairs in the basement the other day, and I still had the VHSs of um, the droids and the Ewok cartoons, and uh, I don't really remember them at all, so I'm going to have to actually try the tape out and see if the thing still, you know, works, but um, I do remember watching them, I also remember watching the live action Ewok adventures on Caravan of Courage or whatever, um, I remember I, I would hear about them coming up, like airing on TV or something as like a rerun, and um, and I'd just be like, "Mom, we have to go home so I can watch Ewok Adventures." And I just I don't even really know what it was about, but I just remember it was entertaining enough to me because it was Star Wars and it was well Ewoks, and I love Ewoks because again, Return of the Jedi was one of the first movies I seen. And well, I just freaking love those little things. I don't care what you say about them, but they appealed to me. Um, so yeah, I mean, just in a nutshell, Star Wars just kind of opened my eyes to everything. And, you know, I created this YouTube channel mainly to just, like, spread my passion out to the other people in hopes that I would kind of make connections and we could have conversations about Star Wars. And so far, it's been a really great experience. And, you know, I just want to thank Star Wars, everybody who's, you know, connected to you know, making this amazing thing that I can't even describe, it's just magic. So with the help of Star Wars, I've actually been able to bond more with my parents recently. Um, so we went to see The Force Awakens, we went to see Rogue One, we're gonna see The Last Jedi, like, before my parents, like, my mom would be, like, she likes certain things about Star Wars, my dad really never seen Star Wars. So it's cool to get, like, their fresh perspective, to talk with them about Star Wars, and, yeah, so it's just been an awesome, awesome thing, and, you know, honestly, I think about Star Wars probably, like, at least 50 times a day, I'm not even gonna lie, like, Star Wars, well, obviously, when I wake up, there's Star Wars surrounding me, everywhere, so it's, it's hard not to think about Star Wars, but, I mean, that's just what I wanted to say. Uh, I just wanted to tell you guys what I think about Star Wars, why it is. I'm so obsessed. Hopefully you have more of an understanding. And yeah, I just want to thank everybody that had something to do with creating Star Wars. Mainly George Lucas because, again, such a visionary. Without him, none of this would have ever existed. A lot of people out there, I know creative people in entertainment, 
never would have gotten started without Star Wars. So it is just such a strong backbone. And I just want to thank the franchise, thank and, and appreciate everything that has done for me specifically. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for me, Star Raptor. If you guys like this video, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. I have tons of other Star Wars content that I update on a frequent basis. I just uploaded a video about all these new pictures coming out of The Last Jedi's set. So make sure you check that out. I'm Star Raptor. Thank you for watching. May the Force be with you, and happy 40th anniversary, Star Wars. So, did you like the video? Then make sure you rate it a thumbs up, and if you did that, go over there, hit that Star Raptor head so you subscribe to my channel. Doing so will keep you up to speed on all of my latest content. Speaking of which, you can see a couple of my recent uploads down below. I'm also on social media, so what are you waiting for? Let's start nerding out.